Hi, this is Dan, and this is my video about Brown Thompson Department Store in Hartford, Connecticut. For years, the store was located in the Cheney Building, now called the Richardson Building. That building, opened in 1876, still exists today on the east side of Main Street, north of Temple Street, just south of the G. Fox Building. But we're going to start our story years before the Richardson Building was erected when an earlier shopping emporium existed here called the Beehive. So I'll talk about the Beehive first, then I'll talk about the company that absorbed it in 1894, which was Brown Thompson and Company. And then I'll talk about the various buildings that Brown Thompson and Company occupied and built over the years afterwards. This is a late 1860s view north, up the east side of Main Street. The old state house was off to the right beyond the frame of this picture. None of the buildings in this picture still exist today. Zooming in to the area where the Cheney building would later be erected, the most prominent building there at that time was a church built in the Greek Revival style. Dedicated on March 23, 1831, it served as the first Baptist church of Hartford until 1856. After that, it was called Turo Hall when it was home to Congregation Beth Israel. From 1856 until the congregation moved to a new synagogue on Charter Oak Avenue in 1876. That later synagogue building survives today and is now the Charter Oak Cultural Center. South of the church, on the corner of Temple Street, stood a dry goods store known as the Beehive. It was established in 1847 by B.P. Starr and Ralph Burkett under the name Starr, Burkett, and Company. Initially, the store occupied only the building's north storefront, but over the years, the store would expand to occupy the entire building and additions would be constructed in the front and rear. In July of 1862, with the Civil War underway, the partners offered a bounty of $10 to each of 50 men who would enlist as volunteers in the Army. These men formed the Beehive Company that would end up comprising part of the 16th Connecticut Volunteer Infantry Regiment. Just two months later, the new regiment would suffer great losses at the Battle of Antietam. After the war, in 1866, the Beehive Partners purchased the building on the corner of Main and Temple where they had been renting space so that they could expand their operations within the building. As the Hartford Current described it, on March 30th, 1866, quote, There are six floors, each 42 by 46 feet, which gives the largest surface room for business operations of any store in the state. Turning these several apartments into one would give a sales room 276 feet long and 42 feet wide. There are few mercantile concerns in the country which have such an extensive store capacity. The arrangement of the different floors consults both the convenience of customers and the comfort of salesmen, of whom the firm employ from 25 to 30, besides a large working force in the cloak-making department. Every foot of room is made available for some useful purpose." Unquote. In addition to the original front sales room, there were four new rooms. One was exclusively a wholesale room, two were for carpets, and the most elaborately decorated was a silk room which had a portion reserved for displaying shawls and cloaks. The silk room was connected directly to the main sales room by means of a balustrade stairway. On the lower level on the Temple Street side, there was also a new wallpaper room. The upper stories of the building had room for storage and space dedicated to carpet making, cloak making, and upholstery work. There were also seven sleeping apartments for the young male employees of the store. Later that year, Mr. Starr retired, and the name of the partnership was changed to Burkett Ives & Company. In 1871, the store expanded again to occupy even more of the building, including the corner storefront at Main and Temple Streets. 
Burkett died in 1874, and the firm name changed to Ives, Hamlin, and Ingram. A year later, though, disaster struck. At three o'clock in the morning of February 12, 1875, a fire was discovered that had started in the basement of the building owned by Alfred Eli that was located between the synagogue and the beehive. Because of frozen hydrants, it took 20 minutes after firefighters arrived before they could get the first stream of water going. The fire quickly spread. The stores of W. M. Miller and R. Ballerstein in the Eli building were destroyed and the neighboring beehive building was also gutted. Ironically, Mr. Ballerstein's fire insurance rates had recently been raised due to the danger of fire from the neighboring synagogue building, which had been built of wood. He had reduced his coverage by $5,000 to offset the rate increase. Now his store was in ruins, and the old church building, considered a fire danger by the insurance company, was still standing. The Beehive's owners, Ives, Hamlin, and Ingram, calculated that they had lost $75,000 worth of stock. Also lost was $1,000 of samples that a silk drummer had been allowed to store in the building overnight. It was not long before a new structure was erected on the site of both the ruined buildings and the former church and synagogue. It was built by the Cheney Brothers Silk Manufacturers of Manchester as an office and apartment building with retail space on the first floor. Originally called the Cheney Block, it is now called the Richardson Building after its famous architect H. H. Richardson. It is in fact an early example of his work in the architectural style that bears his name, the Richardsonian Romanesque which features quarry-faced brownstone and prominent round-arched windows. In March of 1877, the building's first retail tenant opened shop in the corner storefront. It was a revivified beehive, reopening in the very same vicinity where it had first started 30 years earlier. The old partners Hamlin and Ingram had moved on, but John S. Ives continued in the newly formed partnership of Noose Ives and Company. But a little over a year later, the store would have a new owner, William H. Bulkley, brother of the famous mayor of Hartford and governor of Connecticut, Morgan G. Bulkley. Under Bulkley's leadership, the store continued to prosper as one of Hartford's most popular retail establishments. It soon expanded to occupy the second-story hall above its first-floor salesroom. The store finally closed in 1894 when Bulkley retired and sold his entire stock to another store that also occupied space in the Cheney Building, Brown, Thompson, and Company. Back in 1877, not long after the Beehive had first occupied the south storefront of the Cheney building, Brown Thompson and Company had moved into the building's north storefront. Before that, the store had been located in a building on the west side of Main Street, about where the gold building stands today. The origins of the company were described in a Hartford Current article of March 3, 1916, that celebrated the firm's 50th anniversary. Quote, In March 1866, Frank S. Brown, James M. Thompson, and William McWhirter, three young men in the employ of Hogg, Brown, and Taylor, a well-known dry goods house of Boston, came to this city and opened a dry goods store at what was then number 269 Main Street. Various cities in the West had been considered, but while on a business trip here, Mr. McWhorter was favorably impressed and told his associates that he liked the looks of Hartford. Inquiries were made, which developed the fact that this was a wealthy city, a good money center, and enjoyed a large trade from the surrounding territory. 
These reports, together with the ability to secure a suitable store, settled the matter. The store occupied the ground floor and the basement, having altogether about 4,000 square feet of floor space. The firm introduced ideas which were new to the dry goods business in this city, among them being the one price idea giving assurance to customers that each was being treated exactly as were all the others a fact which by itself attracted a large patronage. Not more than 15 clerks were employed, and the business was confined entirely to the selling of dry goods, the department store institution not having developed even in the larger cities. Other innovations affected by the firm were the 6 o'clock closing hour, which gradually spread among the other stores which had been accustomed to remain open until 10 o'clock, vacations to employees, and closing the store on holidays. At the end of five years of successful business, the firm bought out the adjoining dry goods store of C.H. Smith, and the two were made into one, giving floor space of 5,400 square feet, or a little more than double the original size. Unquote. As the advertisement on the right shows, the company name changed to Brown, Thompson, and McWhirter in the 1870s, but when McWhirter retired in 1877, it reverted again to Brown, Thompson & Company. In that same year, the store moved into the Cheney Building. This is a section of the Sanborn Atlas of Hartford of 1885, showing the Cheney Building on the right at the corner of Main and Temple Streets. The buildings just to the north of it, to the left, are where the G. Fox building would later be built. As I mentioned, the Beehive occupied the south storefront, and Brown Thompson occupied the north storefront. The move to the Cheney building gave Brown Thompson and company the space to start adding more departments, and the store would soon expand further. In 1884, the store added its first annex just to the rear and extending to the north of the Cheney Building. This is a section from the Sanborn Atlas of 1900, which shows Brown Thompson's further growth. In 1890, the store expanded its annex southward to Temple Street, so that it now occupied all the space behind the Cheney Building. This long annex, designed by architect F.S. Newman of Springfield, had a vaulted ceiling and a gallery that ran around the interior and featured a cafe and restaurant. Brown Thompson's main sales floor now covered over an acre of space. In 1894, after renting the space formerly occupied by the Beehive store, Brown Thompson erected a five-story building connecting the rear of the former beehive to the 1890 Long Annex. In 1897, Brown Thompson finally purchased the entire Cheney building. The store would soon occupy the entire ground floor after the remaining two retail tenants moved out. One was David Strong's shoe store, and the other was the dry goods store I. Wise & Company, which would move across the street into a new building and take the new name Wise Smith and Company. The various sections that Brown Thompson occupied in the Cheney Building and its various additions surrounded an inner court, which was covered over to become the center of the completed store. On the left is a 1930s view west up Temple Street. It shows the 1894 Annex, located behind the old Beehive section of the Cheney Building. It also shows the Temple Street facade of the 1890 Long Annex, with its distinctive raised roof skylights. On the right is a 1910 picture of the east side of the Long Annex, showing the initial 1884 section, located northeast of the Cheney Building, and the 1890 extension that went southward to Temple Street. In the foreground, excavation is underway 
for a new building dedicated to the sale and repair of automobiles. Brown Thompson began selling automobiles initially as an experiment around the turn of the century in connection with their bicycle business. It proved so successful that the store erected a building for repairing automobiles just east of their annex in 1904. It would have been just to the left, out of the frame of the picture on the right. Designed by Isaac A. Allen Jr., it was a two-story structure, the ground floor used for storage and parking autos while an elevator could transport them to the upper floor for repairs. In the photo on the right from 1910, as I said, work had begun on an even larger automobile service building, which was completed in 1911. Also designed by Isaac A. Allen Jr., the main floor was used for demonstrating cars for sale and for day storage of customers' automobiles. In the basement was the repair department and the machine shop. The upper floor was the salesroom. When the building opened in 1911, Brown Thompson were the agents for Cadillac, Lozier, and Stevens Durier automobiles. But by 1914, the company exclusively sold Cadillacs. By the 1930s, the company was selling Lincolns and Fords. The next major addition to Brown Thompson came in 1917, when the store replaced its very first edition of 1894, shown on the left in 1910, with a nine-story edition shown on the right. Just east of the 1917 edition is the 1911 Automobile Service Building I just mentioned. A massive neon sign was placed atop the 1917 building in 1930. Beneath the name Brown Thompson, it originally read, Lincoln and Ford Sales and Service. But by 1937, it read Kelvinator, referring to Kelvinator refrigerators. The company's various buildings are shown in this section from the 1922 Sanborn Atlas of Hartford. There's the Cheney Building of 1876 with additions made into the 1890s. Then there's the 1890 edition to Brown Thompson, which in later years came to be known for some reason as the Old Armory Building. Then there's the 1904 Automobile Repair Building, which was later converted into a paint shop. An addition to the store's garage facilities would be constructed nearby in the 1920s, connecting to the 1911 automobile building. And finally, there's the nine-story 1917 building. You might notice that the 1911 and 1917 buildings were located directly behind the G. Fox building. When that department store wanted to expand to its rear in later years, these brown Thompson structures would be in the way. The 1917 addition to Brown Thompson greatly expanded the store's retail space. Among the new features was an emergency room with a miniature hospital, cots, and a nurse in attendance. The partners behind the company had changed over the years. Brown retired in 1891, and Thompson retired in 1896. By the early 20th century, the partners were George A. Gay, Harry B. Strong, and William L. Ledger, but the business retained the name Brown Thompson & Company. In 1930, it became a corporation, Brown Thompson Incorporated, with George A. Gay as president and Harry B. Strong as vice president and treasurer. Strong, who'd become a partner in the 1890s, died in 1933. Gay had first started at the company as a stock boy at the age of 17 way back in 1871, just months after he emigrated from his native Scotland. He became a partner 10 years later and became the senior partner when Thompson retired in 1896. Gay himself retired in 1934, after over 60 years with the company. 
When Brown Thompson the store had incorporated in 1930, a separate corporation was formed called Gay and Strong to control the organization's real estate. In 1936, the neighboring G. Fox and Company department store purchased the realty holdings of Gay and Strong for a million and a half dollars, the largest real estate transaction in the history of Hartford to that time. This meant that G. Fox controlled the properties occupied by Brown Thompson's. Now, Brown Thompson continued to operate as an independent store for the next three decades, but its buildings were owned by G. Fox, and in the short term, that meant that G. Fox could now undertake the removal of the 1917 annex to Brown Thompson that was now in the way of G. Fox's expansion plans. The building would not be torn down. Instead, the 1890 Brown Thompson Annex, also known as the Old Armory, would be demolished. Then, the 1917 building would be moved 125 feet south, coming to rest behind the Cheney Building and allowing G. Fox to expand in its place. On the left is a picture of the 1917 building in its original location, east of G. Fox and west of the Brown Thompson Automobile Service Building. On the right is the same area, located along Talcott Street, after the building had been moved and G. Fox was building its own addition in its place. The moving of the Brown Thompson Building, which took place in 1937, was famous at that time as a feat of engineering. The Southern New England Contracting Company used two steam-powered donkey engines like the one pictured on the left, to move the 8,000-ton building inch by inch over a system of steel rollers, as shown in the picture on the right. Amazingly, the store remained open to customers throughout the process, with water, gas, and electric services provided through flexible pipes. On the left is the view west up Temple Street towards Main Street from circa 1930 that I showed earlier. On the right is a picture of the same area after the 1890 building had been demolished and the 1917 building had been moved south towards Temple Street. On the left is a picture of the south side of the 1917 building just after it had been moved, but before it was patched up. A new four-story section would soon be constructed that would extend the building the rest of the way to Temple Street. And this is a photograph of the area today. The old annex is still there and is now a residence inn. In addition to having its building moved in the wake of the sale of its real estate to G. Fox, Brown Thompson undertook to completely modernize its store as well under the motto, Forward Brown Thompson's. Among the improvements was a new elevator system. Brown Thompson continued in business for another 32 years. In 1948, when the store celebrated its 82nd anniversary, the Hartford Current noted that there were a number of employees still working there who remembered Mr. Brown and Mr. Thompson, who had retired back in the 1890s. One of them was 86-year-old Henry Chapman, who had started the shoe department when he was hired by Mr. Thompson and was still there 58 years later. Brown Thompson closed down in 1969 when the store, which had been in business 103 years, was completely absorbed into G. Fox and Company. The Brown Thompson building would eventually be redeveloped for commercial use in 1978. One tenant of the renovated building, occupying the old Beehive store space in the north section, was a restaurant that revived the name Brown Thompson and Company. The Brown Thompson restaurant continued for the next 17 years before expanding and reopening in 1997 as City Steam Brewery and Cafe. Brown Thompson was considered to be Hartford's first great department store, expanding to a large size several years before its major rivals and spearheading the development of the section of Main Street that would come to include the large stores of Wise Smith, Sage Allen, and G. Fox. While many of the additions the store built over the years have been lost, 
The great facade of the Cheney Building, created by H. H. Richardson 150 years ago, survives today as one of Hartford's greatest architectural landmarks. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel, hit the like button, leave a comment, and as always, thanks for watching.